KPO Entertainment. Hey, listen, today's episode is brought to you by Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus gives you total control to watch anything, anytime, anywhere. Watch classic shows or all your current favorites. Act now and get a cool special deal just for TMOS listeners. An absolutely free extended trial of Hulu Plus. Just go to HuluPlus.com slash TMOS. Remember, that's HuluPlus.com slash TMOS. And now, the show. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Oscar, my friend. Good morning. How was your weekend? Wait, don't answer that because we've got an exclusive get on the phone. You know what's starting to happen, and you can feel it in the air, is Olympic fever. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, everyone's thinking Olympics, and that's why we actually took some time over the weekend to book some. No one else has interviewed this person yet, and with the, it's in Sochi, right? Yeah, Sochi. This is something that is going to be very exciting because no one's talked to this person yet, and we have him on the phone. Um, Are you there? Hello, honey. This is the Olympic flame. Hello, hello, honey. Jet lag, honey. You're tired? Mm, 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 mm. We're so glad to have you today. I'm traveling by airplane, <laughs> helicopter, train, car, even reindeer, honey. <laughs> well, it's the Olympic flame. Oh, it is exhausting being the Olympic flame. Oh, I am so tired. Now, you, you're aware, Oscar, that the flame has to travel to the Olympic site. Yeah, I'm did aware. You see, did you you see the other day, honey, when I went out and they had to put me back on? Oh, you're way out. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank God that man was there with a letter, honey. Now, I was always under the Disaster impression... Disaster was a foot, honey. I am always mm. under the impression... And may I call you Flame? Oh, absolutely. Listen, well, Flame. Could, uh, I'd like to be called OF. Oh, OF. <laughs> Olympic Flame, honey. I was curious... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I, I love I that music. Thought, uh, I, well, I'm sorry, we're talking at the same time. What was that? I always thought that there was a backup flame. Oh, no. The, the only backup flame is my backup. No, don't do no. Yes, man. sir. Get my backup, honey. <laughs> I'm the Olympic flame, and don't you ever forget about that. OF. Hello there, Oscar Santana. Hello there. Are you familiar, are you with, are you familiar I, with Oscar? Am I familiar with him? Oh, my goodness. I follow that CrossFit, honey. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, can I give you some statistics, Oscar? Sure, please. Uh, put this in your pipe and smoke it, honey. 14,000 torch bearers. Hmm. 30,000 volunteers. Yes. A total travel time of 123 days, honey. Now, I have a question for you. Yeah. How many torchbearers are there? I told you, there are 14,000 torchbearers. That's a lot of fingers on me, honey. A lot of cold fingers. Oh, I don't like those cold morning runs, baby. <laughs> That's right, honey. Yes, sweetie. OF, have you ever been dropped? I've been dropped, I've been stepped on, I've been extinguished, I've been rained on, honey. If there is a climatological issue or a human error to be had, I've experienced it, honey. For those of you joining us in progress, we have an interview now for Olympic Fever, and you are? I am the Olympic Flame. (laughs) And I'm going to be traveling a total. Are you ready, honey? I'm ready. Put this in your pipe and smoke it, sweetie. (laughs) I'm going to be traveling a total of... 40,000 miles. That's a lot. 40,000 miles. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? And all those people carrying you, do you prefer a tight grip? No, what I prefer are BBs. What's that? Bathroom breaks, honey. Oh, Oh, because I guess they have to take you in with them. Oh, no, of course, I'm an Olympic flame, so I don't have to go to the bathroom. But what about your your tenders? Oh, the tenders? (laughs) I love chicken tenders, honey. I'm not talking about that. My tenders, you mean my torch bearers? Yeah. Well, some of them uh, have smaller bladders than others, honey. (laughs) Yes, hello. Do you get involved in the politics? I mean, there's some concern about uh, Sochi's Olympics and if they're actually going to have snow or not. Oh, I don't care about that. Sochi's a lovely place, but the whole country makes me a little nervous, if you know what I mean. Why? Oh, I just think they've got kind of a Dark Ages mentality about certain sociological activities, honey. You don't think you'll be accepted? Uh, I will always. (laughs) Wherever I go. And let me make this clear to you. I never knew that the Olympic flame had arms. <laughs> you are gesturing wildly. Wherever I go, honey, I am not only welcome, but I am cherished, honey. Yes, yeah. When you see OF coming through your neighborhood, hmm, you will be so grateful, honey, because everybody loves the Olympic flame. Alex Ovechkin, the great eights, had his hand right around you a couple yes. of days ago. Oh, and what a strong hand that is. Oh, my. That? I practically get all Google talking about it. Oh, he 
is just so powerful, honey. How's he going to do this season? I think he's going to suck. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 he's going to do just fine, just like the rest of that team. Yeah. Do, you, do you follow sports? I follow sports. Well, I'm the Olympic flame. But I mean like pro sports. Well, no, I primarily like to follow Olympic sports, of course, honey. <laughs> of course you understand. Wrestling is uh, coming back. And, and in particular, the Winter Olympics. Is, that's what we're talking about. February, mark it on your calendar, honey. <laughs> Who are you? I'm the Olympic flame. <laughs> Yes, sir. When a sport falls off or comes back, right? Yeah. It's tough to see them go, or, or, and it's nice to see them come back. It's very frustrating, yeah. honey. Wrestling's coming back. What are your thoughts on that? I'm very happy about that. There's nothing like two sweaty men getting in the middle of, a, of an arena, and then, uh, you know, pin me, baby. Pin me, baby. Ooh, that's so exciting. Can I tell you a little bit about my shape? Of course. I am the shape of um, a feather. <laughs> what? Uh, well, I'm actually an allusion to a fairy tale character. Uh, such as the Firebird. Oh, and so an if allusion. You, well, if you look at OF when he's coming through there, I kind of resemble a, a don't speak, feather. Don't speak of yourself in the third person. Well, I speak it's about unseemly. anything. I'm the Olympic flame. It's, is it illusion? I weigh almost allusion. four pounds, and a I'm 37 inches tall. Allusion. 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 Now, when Not back, illusion. Illusion would be something like that That gorgeous David Copperfield, honey. Or Doug Henning, the oh, late Doug Henning. Doug Henning's dead. <laughs> yes. Yes, that little wispy man. Now, I have a question. We talked about sure, this, honey. and I know, you know we could talk Summer Olympics. Yes. But we're talking Winter Olympics. Have you ever had any one-on-one -on -one time with Dick Button? Dick Button? Oh, does that man love his skating, honey? <laughs> he is a pioneer in figure skating, and he I is. always love his telecast. Have you been with... Uh, how long have you have been... Have I been with? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm no. sorry. I don't, don't go down that road, honey. No, I don't want to. Okay. The Olympic flame does not kiss and tell. Are you the same Olympic flame like that we saw in 1930s in Berlin? I'm the same <laughs> Olympic flame from back in the day. Oh, you mean from ancient Greece? I'm virtually ageless. My <laughs> torch has been carried on forever. Now, listen, and no don't let those people tell you when I go out yes. that uh, you know that I'm out forever. No, I'm still pouring out gas. <laughs> I bet you oh, are. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's why that guy was able to pick up his ladder and get me going again. He flicked your bick. Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> <laughs> Olympic flame here. So any predictions for the Winter Games? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I predict that I will be burning as bright as I've ever burned, and everybody will love me. The Olympic flame will burn forever and ever and ever. And I tell you, I'd just like to say a nice hello to Muhammad Ali. Oh, okay, that's nice. Yes, that, remember that one time he held me? Yeah. Oh, that was a shaky trip, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Who said anything about that? I just thought you'd like to join us for some ice cream. Maybe your bug here can join us. We can talk about burying the hatchet. You know what a hatchet is, don't you, bug? It's an axe. Sort of, yeah, yeah. I got one in the car if you'd like to see it. I'll pass. Fair enough. I like to carry it, you know. You never know when you're going to need it. Uh, you know, a situation may come up, say, uh, uh, for example, someone's been uh, drinking and about to drive a loved one home. Then I like to know I have it. Not to kill. Oh, just to maim. Take a little off the shoulder. The elbow. Shave a little meat off the old kneecap. Ooh. You got both kneecaps? <laughs> I like to keep my razor sharp, too. Sharp enough you can shave with them. Why, I've been known to circumcise a gnat. <laughs> You're not a gnat, are you, bug? Wait a minute. Bug? Nat? Is there a little similarity there? Whoa, I think there is. <laughs> you ever hear of a tuna? <laughs> you ever hear of a ritual killing? <laughs> it's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Speedwack, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. We are live from Studio 1K in the Fiberplex Broadcast Center. This is the Mike O'Mara Show. We are downloaded worldwide over 20 million times. Wow. And we are powered by our good friends and the wonderful people at Encore Insurance Services. We're at MikeO'MaraShow.com, 102.9 FM WTNT in Washington, D.C. Yes. And the... 
and the mighty. <laughs> Don't you love it? Nah. And the mighty 1630 KCJJ in Iowa. Today is Monday, October 7th, 2013. And uh, I want to tell you something. Yeah, I want to tell you. We're brought to you by Pro Flowers today. Oh, yeah. And I want to say to my lovely bride, I've been spending a little bit of uh, time in front of the television watching sports. It is the probably the pinnacle of the sports season, right? It is, and I know that uh, my wife is probably like a lot of wives out there that uh, you know are well. They call them football widows. Yes. In my mm. case, baseball playoff widows, hockey widows, and football widows. Yes. Uh, if you've been spending most of your time playing fantasy football and watching games all week, and if you've been glued to the TV this football season and during the baseball playoffs, sure. And with the opening of the NHL, uh, it's time to build up some credits uh, with your mate. Before you uh, park in front of the TV. Here's a, here's a way you can do okay, it. Okay, how can you do it, Mike? You can go to proflowers.com and find a huge, I mean, ha, huge. Well, I could say epic. Selection of bouquets starting at uh, the low, low price of just nineteen ninety nine. Nice. What? That's a change back on a 20. That's incredible. Uh, type in the password. You know it by now. I hope you do. If you don't know it by now, then uh, you're new to the family mm-hmm. and we'll teach you it. It's T. M O S. You can get one dozen assorted roses when you put that code in for nineteen ninety nine plus a free gloss vase. I love glass vases or glass vase. Right. Uh, anyway, it's wonderful stuff, and satisfaction is guaranteed of your money back. Pro Flowers was recently awarded the highest customer satisfaction with the online flower retailers by J D Power and Associates. Visit jdpower.com for more info on that. Here is what I want you to do: get one dozen assorted roses for right. nineteen ninety. Plus a free glass vase. Go to proflowers.com. Click on the microphone in the upper right hand corner and type in T M O S. And uh, Pro Flowers, uh, really, consistently, the best quality flowers. You get them oh, the rapidly. Best. and uh, you They know, last forever. My wife, now, when she sees the, uh, the Pro Flowers box come up the walkway, you know, yes. but. Oh, mm. you didn't. And uh, how did uh, nine your... times out of ten he didn't? It's yeah. someone else. Well, yeah, that's how did, flowers. How did your uh, lovely uh, bride enjoy her? She flowers? loves them. That's yeah. Though I forgot to take the name Mike O'Mara show off. Of, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I did? Oh, that's not good. As a her early... details, baby. That's details. a detail for an early Halloween gift. I sent Carrie a bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this October, <laughs> make sure you get your Pro Flowers bouquet. Ooh. I like that. Uh, welcome uh, to the show, Whoa Whoa. Great to be here as usual. We are uh, very, very excited about uh, everything going on. It's a big month, uh, ramping all the way up to our live show, and uh, we're very happy that uh, you are continuing to buy those tickets in droves for Omericon 2013. Yeah. But there are we a couple thank you. tickets left. Uh, there are, but yes, there, you know what? Really, we've got we've to gotta do a push for this. And, yeah. uh, still tell your neighbors, still tell your friends. It's a great evening out. For Omericon 2013, and we want to see you there. Will and, you reissue uh, your challenge? We have to challenge? pick the band this week, too. You have to reissue your challenge. You need to get 10 friends to come with you. Get 10 friends to come with you. Uh, we sold some uh, a lot of tickets this weekend to Omericon, and we want you to be there as well. Uh, it's going to be a great night. Uh, well, let's start with that. Uh, okay. It's going to be a great night, and I know it's going to be a great night because I... I've really never had this much help for a live show in my life before. Well, I, how, how do you, do you feel? Now? Do you feel that you are being propped up, or do you feel you're being assisted? I don't think I'm the right one to answer that question. Oh, who should answer it then? <laughs> I don't feel right answering it. I know that Pony had a busy weekend. This so is what I wrote today. Him. I said, let me see. I wrote the live show. They're bringing in so much help, and there's so much being done that I think uh, I think they think I'm too old to do the live show myself. Oh, Peshaw. It yes. has nothing to do with your age or yourself. The show is being very, very well organized. Yes, it is. I want to say that. The yes. show is being very, very well organized. Network time constraints. I am someone who uh, exists in a, a bit more of a... Let's just say a freer environment, especially with live performance. And you know what? I would say, I would add to freer, I would say, and I've worked with you for a long time. Yes. I would say organic. Yeah, I like organic. And organic is great. Well, I don't have any room for organic. We've got some very solid comedy material that's planned for this live show. Yes. And I even, and and we even have our our good friend uh, Katie, Mm -hmm. who is going to be our stage manager. Mm -hmm. And Katie sent out a list of uh, what we're going to be doing and what times we're going to be doing. We had a big meeting. uh, uh, Five-person Skype meeting. That's we, right. We've had a meeting. Yes. All things I've never done before. And uh, and I'm I'm very, very, very excited about you it. You know what I think? <gasps> and maybe you're not ready to embrace this fact yet. What? I think the fact that this kind of planning and these meetings are existing, this is us stepping it to the next level. Really? I do. I really do. 
Because if you look at where we were, say, and we're just about a month out, where were we a month out from Reno? Well, I, I was jotting things down. Yeah. I, and that's what yeah, I I'm do. like one of your yellow pads of paper. That's what I yeah. Now, yeah. see, now what? Now, see, then, okay, now we're going to get to it. You see, now uh, we're going to get this to is, it. This just took uh, a now bad Now we're going to get So that was a problem for you? The yellow, the yellow paper no, was, was a Reno problem? No, Reno was a 10. Re- Reno was a 10. It was a no. great show. Reno was not a 10 logistically. Oh, no, but I'm Re- just saying the be- show and, itself was great. And most of the stuff that we are doing is going to contribute to a better logistical because performance. Because it's a different type of performance. Right. Yes. Unlike we've ever done before. It, it, there's a lot going on. There's uh, moving I can't, parts. I don't want to tip any hands here. I don't want to give any previews, but there are a lot of moving parts for this right. live yes. show. And because there's so many more moving parts, mm-hmm. I knew that I needed to, we needed as a whole to work with somebody that had worked on projects like, like this before. And, for example, in the past, before I got into regular radio, I was like – uh, fighting Is this at Dean College? And scrapping my way through uh, prom- uh, promotions at a major radio station right. in Washington, D.C. And we used to put on, with 30, 40 people, the HF Festival for 80,000 people. Yes. So right. I've worked with the certain people we've brought in for those big shows. Right. Now, smaller venue doesn't mean it doesn't have to be an A-class organization. Let me explain. Oh, no, we have A-class, just less in the class. <laughs> we don't have 80 people, but they're still every bit as good. Let me explain, though, to both of you. Yes. Uh, because I, believe it or not, I do sometimes think even a few more steps ahead than even everybody else Of course. Yes. helping me on this. Yeah. There will be a show within a show. There will be one show that we are planning to do. Oh, yeah. And I then there will it. be a complete other show that I will plan to do in the event that the previous show, with all the wonderful ideas that we have that rely on... On a little more technology than technology, I'm comfortable yeah. with, right. well, and and that I was right, say, are you okay there? Was was say, that, that's you of, love right. technology. I <laughs> love technology. I I will be prepared uh, in any event, always over to take that last second right turn when something clicks and doesn't work. Yes. Let me ask. Let me offer which, this. which worries me, Oscar. Do you know what technically one of the best definitions of jazz is? Jazz no, music. No, no, no. Jazz music is people imp- improvising within a structure. Like, for example, a drummer and a guitarist would never solo at the same time. Why would they? But so what we're doing is we're providing a structure for the improvisation. Yeah. And the happiness lies in the middle. Mike, everybody gets their way. Yeah, we're, we're your safety team. Yeah. Now, at the same time. It's like t- bringing in Felix Grant. Well, there are two things. There, there's, <laughs> there are two things that I. It, technically, if things. If there are technical glitches, I. Pull the plug. Yeah, you should. And I'll do that right away. Of course. If there is, after a couple of the technical presentations, if that's, you know, if that's not uh, going as well as I think, I'll pull the plug. Yeah. Right. If there's something that happens spontaneously during the middle of the I'll pull the plug. Yeah. But what if. I just wanted you guys to be aware what of that. If the oh, plans, you don't think we know that? What if the plans exceed your hopes? Which I, I don't well, I don't have any doubts that uh, that I'm going to be... Don't pull the plug. I'll tell you. <laughs> He'll still even if, if it's <laughs> no, great, we no. pull the plug. Now, be fair. Be fair. You know I won't. I know. I know. You know I won't. And you know an audience. Because, you know an audience. No, you can no, read Because it. part of this live show, uh, there's a lot of good stuff. And, I, of course, I get to do everything I want to do. And no, nobody holds me back from doing that. But at the same time... Well, Pony does. Part of the... <laughs> he prevents you from having a good time. <laughs> part of this live show <laughs> is... Something where I really, I'm looking forward to it. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to being entertained with everybody else in the audience. Oh, by the time which is we, a fun thing. Well, by the time we hit the stage, we have as much fun as anybody. Exactly. Right. I think it's going to be great. But I just needed to. That's just uh, for purpose of venting. Uh, that's my my usual. You know, Monday I usually come in here with a little bit of a vent. Sure. And that's my uh, that's my little Mike, vent. Yes. I look forward to it. It's not like I've never worked with anyone who fought a clock. Before. Here's the way. Here's my paranoia. Yes. This is the ultimate paranoid me. Okay. And, and you guys will uh, hopefully enjoy. This. this to me this is both of you and our friend katie looking at me and and, and going like this now we're going to go on to the next segment oh god are you kidding now we're mo- we're we're moving on to the next segment just like we do every day on the show no that's true come it on does, it doesn't work come well. on jelly it'll be fine it'll, it, it's gonna okay, be did you get that email and you're like hey have i done well with the uh with with everything uh leading up have i managed my stress level a little bit leading up to the uh, fantastic no where i oh stop oh it. he I has i mean no. i know no two weeks ago i know i was wigged up but then i've calmed yeah, down oh, for two weeks you've been great and that's the 
way I yeah, could. Uh, that's why. Because you know what? One week at a time. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> one week at a time. I'm more that's than. That's what they taught you during the program. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> one week at a time. Well, we haven't followed those steps. Well, we're on step five. That's uh, good. Uh, well, I still. Seven to go. Look, you know, part of the thing, the way I understand these programs, is that you <laughs> apologize to people. Uh, yeah. And I apologize all the time. Yeah, but you're not supposed to use a form letter. <laughs> I know you said it would save a lot of time. Well, it's going to be great. I <laughs> cannot tell you how excited I am about doing this, and it's going to be fun. And as I said, I'm going to be... Uh, Pulling plugs. I'm going to actually be... No, I'm not going to do that. I hope I... God, that that to me would not be... I would not be happy if I had to do that. All I can... All but I'll be prepared to do it because you have to be. Is the sound of Pac-Man dying. You know... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, we're doing something else. Plan B. Well, I will say this, and this is for people that may not have seen a live show uh, for the Michael O'Mara show. You're going to see uh, a show that uh, you've never seen before. That's and true. That's going to be a lot of fun, and that's going to be special, and we're very, very excited, and we're going to be implementing some things that, uh, if they go great, we're going to do them again, and uh, but I'm, I'm excited will, about that. But don't be afraid. All your old favorites will be there, too. Yeah, I mean, I'll do I'll do st the standard stuff, yeah. and uh, we're going to have lots of fun, and there's going to be plenty of interaction with our uh, great unwashed, and we'll, we'll like that. It'll be fun. As a matter of fact, I was doing some straightening in my basement, and I found a fabulous door prize to add to the list I'd like to announce at this time. Really? An autographed poster, genuinely autographed poster, of Liza Minnelli. Oh, wow. Let me just say this. Lining up. <laughs> I can't give away what I was going to give away. And I really was thinking about it again. What's that? I'm not giving away the snowblower. Oh. oh. Would you for a sellout? No. What oh. about it? No. No, because I, mean, I think we're going to have a, a hellacious winner. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that product. Yeah, you know what? I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather exactly. I'd rather, come on, Mike. That's why. I'd rather you keep it. I'm going to keep it because then the snow will stay away. But <laughs> it's his, like his divining rod. Yeah, you know, uh, his witchy woman power. I'll, I'll tell you body. what. I will give away what. Uh, and it's kind of banged up. It's a little banged up. But I will give. And it's not the big one. Your liver. But it's the small. Well, that's my liver. <laughs> you know what I'm going to give away? What at the show for a door prize? What I will be giving away the uh, Omera's restaurant sign. The oh, one my that, God, the, really? The, the shingle that, you that, already, that hung up there. You already gave it to a different that's one? That's the big long oh, one. Okay. There's another one that oh, uh, that I'm going to be giving that. away that's a... Uh, oh, so one we can actually... It's a little battered. It's a little battered, but it's yeah, kind of... It's battered and fried. Right. It's a little battered. Uh, we can. That's a size we can transport, well, right? Well, you mean... It, oh, yeah, we can transport okay, that. Okay, because yeah. I was thinking of the big Another one. question, do you think... Uh, if you own a failing restaurant, contact us at foodnetwork.com. <laughs> Do you think uh, in this time of political turmoil, do you think it would be topical and timely to give away my uh, Barack Obama, Joe Biden uh, campaign sign, the giant one that's been in my Oh, I think that's too. Garage? I think you should hold on to it. Yeah, well, hold on. Okay, yeah, so that's yeah. a negative yeah, on there. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a little one. Well, any other yeah. thoughts as far as stuff we can give away? Absolutely. Oh. I mean, do you want to run down some of the items we already have? Yeah, go ahead. A huge, lifelike male appendage used for a female pleasure in a plastic form. A dildo? Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Also, Remember the Mandingo one? That came oh, the with. Mandingo dildo. Yeah. yeah. Also, Perfect Polly, oh. as seen on the show. Oh, that, okay, that's like last week. But you know what? That's like afterthought. Oh, that's no, just no, no. Like, that's no that, like, was, that was forethought for me. And then there's our, our, our grand you. prize, Mike. Perfect Polly. Our grand prize. Oh, we have a grand prize? The... As seen on the show, yeah. as entertained on the show, right. the Bob Hope golf cart. My <laughs> God, okay. Do you think your mom would donate a printer? Ah, oh, you know what? I'll talk to her. <laughs> you got to come up with some sort of oil painting. All right, go. here's the homework assignment before the live show. Yes. Less than a month, uh, well, a little over a month. Yeah. Uh, we all come up with uh, at least two items that, of course. Uh, that we're going to contribute Personal. to the yes. door. Artifacts. Project. And I like the idea of uh, of the sign, I, but I'll keep the uh, the yeah. political sign. Well, you know, we you did sure? that. I thought that would be kind of a keepsake. You know? Let mm -hmm. me know if you think that's cool. Okay, you, we have to show. draw the line between a lovely keepsake and we're cleaning out our garage. I'm not cleaning out my garage. I like that thing. I like having that. It's kind of, oh, you're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. nice not, not between and you two. And at 7.30, Mike, the show's going to start. It's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Wake up, Mike. Don't talk too much. When the green light is on, the mic is live. Don't right. ramble on. If the lights go dark, that means you've blown it. And uh, since this segment is dedicated to our live show, yes. and we'll tell you more about that later on because we're going to be talking about it a lot throughout the month, uh, I do want to urge, uh, if you do have a band, I haven't gone. I have not gone to the band website yet, so I'm not sure. Uh, we have five or six bands. Why are you looking like that? Why are you looking like that? You threw I said a I'd do fit it. I, last week about I'm I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna make sure that the talent is right. Right. 
It's like five days later. Yeah, but I mean, we're not it. picking it until Friday. I mean, but don't I, you I, want I to marinate? Don't... What if it's a close call? What if you got to pick the right band? Well, to be honest with you, uh, last week I went through all five uh, entries that we had. Okay. So if there are more than five Did entries, did you love one uh, more than the other? Uh, you know what? It was a it was a tie between two Ooh. particular bands, but there's you know there's some issues with one of the guys. Oh, yeah, not with me. No. Yeah, Tito. Yeah, you're yeah. the guy that's got the issue with Tito. Yeah, well, so, he doesn't yeah. like Jermaine. But right? also, <laughs> but, but also, band, but, be- but musically, I think that uh, you know we're we're close. We're okay, close. good, good. It's good. just a, it's a delicate balance because you want to you want to find that fine line between a band that's going to be a lot of fun and a band that's going to have. Sometimes the fun cover band aspect of things is trumped by pure musicianship. This is true. And people that are so scary talented that I don't care if they do covers. And also, uh, and that's where I cool. am with uh, with the bands right Personally, now. Personally, for me, I don't want anyone to overshine us. <laughs> if we can get something up there lackluster, no, that to be would honest be great. With you, if you've got a band that's got, uh, you know, uh, you know, you get a lot of people to come out to your shows, that's a that's something that's you want to factor. You want to include that when you uh, give us your little spiel about your band. And if you want to uh, join that fray, because we're going to be picking our winner this week, and we'll be announcing that on Friday, all you have to do is go to the Mike O'Mara Show website and uh, click on Band. Yeah. and uh, Or see. you can email directly, Band. Band at, at, at Omera.com. At Mike O'Mara Show.com. Yeah, it's not up on the... Uh, well, and you can't get it through Omericon, so it's. I think you can see the entries by our website, but you banned at Mike O'Mara Show. Yeah. Banned at Mike O'Mara Show. And Mike, I, I want to take a moment. I know we've been real silly in this opening segment, but I want to say thank you for giving back to the musical community. This is a wonderful yeah. platform what a for way. people to really yeah. expose themselves. There are hundreds of people that might not see them already. You are the Simon Cowell of Falls Church. I give. Establish That's all you do. That's I all do. you do. Yeah. Until it hurts. This is take, not a cheap. Take, take. Uh, this is not just a shill to get a cheap no, no, free no. band. And that's Aerosmith. probably why you were worried about the organization because if the band wants to play a couple extra minutes, right. You're all about that. You're not going to cut Amen. them off that's if it. they're giving and you're giving and we're all giving and that's what's great. To exactly, give. giving is the best thing. Fall you can out, do. boy. <laughs> It's going to be fantastic. I Why, really good heavens, look, it's Justin Bieber. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> and I still have not made a determination as to uh, whether the beard will be uh, snow white as it is right now or whether I will uh, color the beard darker. Or well, snow white's good Or now. what color you would well, color Well, the fact it, is we all know that it. you've lost more weight than I have, and that's good. And I don't so see you're going to look better than I do on stage. So I might want to uh, compensate by uh, having a little darker beard. And, did you know, I hate to revisit this because I don't want to go in circles, but yes. have you relented on the idea of seeing a professional colorist? No, I, but, but I, I need Oscar to Oscar and it. I feel pretty yeah. strong about this. Get the this. sides done. Yeah, get it done. Match the beard. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll do it this week. Yeah. Oh, boy, yeah. All right, I'll do it now this week. Now we're talking. Because before we go, in fact, I'll do it uh, maybe today. Ooh. Oh. Because if we're going to go out and about. And Just enough time to, be, to grow it out if you blow we're, it. We're doing some. Well, I'm not going to say what we're doing. But, uh, yeah, I might. You know, you know I have to do it soon. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So you match up. <laughs> Ass. Talk to our continuity department. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's right. We're going to have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> we'll take a break, and I'll tell you all about Friday night. My big dinner party that I completely punted. Oh no, really? Well, I think my meal was was let's let's be honest. It might have tasted good, but it was just I, I completely utterly blew it, and oh, I know I blew God, it, oh, and no. I know people are too nice to tell me I blew it, but I know I blew it. I mean, I blew it. I blew it like I was sitting there like like an idiot going, mm. just like Carla said. Just like Carla said, oh, I blew it. Damn it! Yeah, I never should have done that. I should hire a caterer. Even for a dinner party for two other people. Hire pony. Or just put a burger on the grill or a steak. That's what I'm capable of. Yeah, I'm not capable that. of doing the cooking for people, especially important people. We'll take a break. Come back with more on the Michael Mara Show. Welcome back to the Michael Mara Show. Hey, does anybody know how many points the New England Patriots scored this weekend? Was it more than or less than eight? Yay! <laughs> well, I just want to know that... Uh, that you people are enjoying FanDuel and that maybe someone was out there that had a good weekend because my particular weekend because of Mr. Tom Brady, Tom candy-ass pretty boy Brady, who I finally get, who I finally get as my fantasy quarterback. And he goes, oh! (laughs) (laughs) You know what Oscar told me, Mike? He said, don't sweat it, any given Sunday. FanDuel.com is what I'm talking about. We're talking about one-week fantasy football leagues for real cash, immediately uh, weekly cash payouts, no waiting, no upfront fees, no season-long commitments. You can play one week or every week and win. I like to put a different team on the field every single week. That's right. That's how it would be if you were in the NFL, too. Right now, I am uh, live on this very program, live to tape, of course. I am going to be going to my fantasy uh, page 
for FanDuel. I'm going to FanDuel.com, and I'm going to see how I did. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, this let's is see very, this. And what's really exciting good. is it, it's for Tom Brady. Yeah, as your consigliere to your GM, I usually get a uh, text update from, from Josh Murphy, our intern. When things go badly, does Josh lay low? Yeah, he lays low, low. Like, he doesn't answer his phone low. See how we did? How'd you do? Hold on a second. So Tom Brady was your quarterback? That's right. Quarterback. He played all Brady's this week. Yeah. Marsha, Jam. Well. They lost. Little, little Bobby Brady. Lost. And, you know, did you have, do you remember who your running back was? I'm not able to log in. Oh. Uh, it's another password that I've shocks. forgotten. You know, that's the way it goes. I never should have done this live on the air. You know what he did? What? what? He changed the password when he realized how bad you did. Unplug it, Mike. Yeah. Just unplug it. I, I should unplug it. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think I did real well. You didn't do well. I feel I that if you had a Keep measure of success. Yourself. This is now a quest. Oh, uh, here we go. Don't you feel if he had it has a nothing to do with FanDuel. It has everything to do with me. No, no problem. If he had a measure of success, I believe Josh would have broken down barriers to get to him. Instead, uh, Josh is hiding. <laughs> he's in a bunker. He's hiding. I'll say this. Um, for me, FanDuel is only as fun as, as as much money as Mike is winning. So if Mike's not winning, it's not really fun. But for you us. know what? Last week, he was still, even though he did not have a banner week last week, he was still playing with house money. Yes, but that's to what hear I'm the saying. way Josh tell it. He, right. he put what a uh, two hundred bucks down. So he's uh, he at one point he was up I think a hundred and forty dollars. And yeah, and you know what? And a hundred of that was match. That's right. So he was good to go there. Now, if you had a banner week next week, you could probably right. get that back. I well, you know, what? you might. I'll be honest with you. I didn't do as badly as I thought. Okay, here See, we go. See, Mike is all about I mean, aggressive I, play. I'm not sure. Okay, I can't tell you right now the total money uh, that I was uh, involved in this week, but I did have. <laughs> Of 111 points, which is, you know, when your quarterback scores roughly six points for you. Yeah, it's not bad. And, uh, if a real NFL team put 111 on the ceiling Let me just board. say to Mr. Des Bryant of the Dallas Cowboys, you kicked a little ass. That was your running back? Him. Yeah. A short for Desiree. Jeez. Yeah, it was, uh, it was frustrating. It was frustrating. Because you did pretty good. I, Tom Brady did nothing. My, yeah. uh, you know, I'd like to find out exactly. Uh, did, did, any, did anyone check with uh, the running back for Seattle? Uh, oh, my God, what's his name? The guy that I took out of the lineup and put in Reggie Bush in his uh, Oh, place. and you said that if this proved Marshawn? to be a good thing, you Marshawn. could be... Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. That you could be noted as one of the great yes. people of NFL history. Exactly. I'll because you him. called it. Right. <laughs> Marshawn Lynch, 82 <laughs> points. Uh, How unfortunate. You know, it, it, just, it was tough. Jay Feely, we kind of made a last-minute change. He didn't do that so well. So these were all your calls. Yes, but let me tell you, I, I want to say that this did you, is... Did you I'm having more fun with FanDuel because I can go to uh, directly to the website just like I did. Did you bitch and moan for Brady? Uh, I looked at no. I, I was watching a lot of different football games yesterday yes. because uh, the Redskins had a bye week. Right. So I'm watching uh, the Giants play miserably. Right. And then I watch uh, the Dallas game. And in between, I see the crawl and I see that uh, New England had uh, you know no points at all. It uh, that New England just sucked. I believe a lot of people saw the crawl on Friday night. Six <laughs> points. Six <laughs> points for uh, for New England against Cincinnati. That's not yeah, thirteen to six. That Nobody expects uh, Tom no. Brady to do that. So it's FanDuel. Go to FanDuel, click on the microphone in the upper right-hand corner, use the code TMOS, and you'll get yourself a money match. That's what they do. 200 listeners to sign up will have their deposit matched up to $200. That's the first 200. But you have to enter to win. Uh, TMOS is the code when you join FanDuel.com, where every week is a new season. That's F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com, and use the code TMOS. So stay away from Josh Murphy. Please do. It shouldn't be hard because he hides all the time. He's nothing but trouble. He is? All right. So I am going to make a oh, dinner he had 102 for... yards. He did? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's... that's 10 that's points, a, right? That's, that's why I had a great... great that's, that's a solid performance, but, uh, you know, he did better than Reggie Yeah, but you're not going down in the record books, though. No, and uh, that's what you have to... That but what's, what makes it fun. It makes it so much fun. You because, do love it. You well, love no, it even when you lose. I, there is a league. I was in a league where if I did well, I could win like $3,000. You had... Yeah. You yeah. had the wide receiver Des Bryant from the Cowboys. On your yes, team? I did. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, he he scored twenty seven points. Jeez. But usually the guys. And look, I'm not going to make any secret about this. What's fun about FanDuel is if you get a Des Bryant performance, mm-hmm. and then you get a a quarterback who has a, a great performance, and you need one other guy, you can usually be in the hunt, and you can be in the thick of things. You have to have guys that are going to have yeah. uh, career days or season long. But days. it's fun. But it's a blast. I think and I'm going to change FanDuel. my name to Des. <laughs> Des Spiewak. Des Spiewak. Don't Des you think <laughs> My old man had a friend that was an advertising guy in uh, Massachusetts, and his name... Oh, God. What was it? Dev Digazaldi. 
D E V D E V. Was it short? Do you know what it was short I for? I have no idea, but it was Dev Diggers. That's you a know, great name. You know, they talk about Mad Men in that era. They had they all your had, dad lived it. They had names like that. Yeah, they had all these like these nicknames. You know, mm -hmm. Wink. You know, and Midge. You know, they all had the. I remember my parents used to have parties, and they'd have. When's Dev coming over? Oh, he's a uh, Buzz Beans coming over. Do you, you know, know where Dev Saturday. is? Dev is over with Barb and Chuck Moody. <laughs> Dev Diggazol. Yeah, well, because Barb made that great uh, ambrosia salad that you liked so bad with the little marshmallow. Dev, do you want more salad? So the Omeras did a little socializing, uh, formal socializing, which I really don't do. You I put on a, a dinner jacket. Uh, my social patterns haven't changed since I went to American University. I do what the children do. I party like children do. Yeah, you're right. An idea. For me, socializing is usually where are we going. Yeah, let's go out to a bar. That's it. It's and I shouldn't. I'm 54. I should have more formal dinner get-togethers because they're really quite pleasant. Formal's not the word. Structured, maybe. Structured. Yeah, an, an adult party. An adult party. That's where you, good. A and dinner party, but yes. not adult like with nudity. Oh where, no, where, no, where no, no, not like. See, and you're the same, like and that's why you say that. Party. I'm trying. I'm doing better. I have my supper club. You probably do more adult socializing than I do. We've gotten better because we've made friends through school. Right. The kids like other adult parents. That's perfectly normal. Yeah, and so it's we've like, been doing better that yeah, way. Yeah, we'll cook some steaks and uh, just come, come on, on over yeah. on Friday. Uh, we'll play a board game. So uh, we invited the uh, the Colburns to come over. Mm -hmm. You uh, were sweating this. The, the, the colonel and his wife, uh, his lovely wife, Nancy. And I had uh, on the menu my famous Louisiana barbecued shrimp. Signature. I would say if you, you have maybe two signature meals. Yes. One is the shrimp and one is your lobster <laughs> stew. Right. And this well, is the shrimp I haven't made in 15 years. But I'm sure it so was still delicious. You, no. no, no, you didn't No, forget. what I did was I forgot. I test drove it two weeks ago with Carla and her mom. Right. And it was a disaster. I, and, was it an unmitigated disaster? Yes. Why? What yeah. made it? What was the problem? You I, said it still tasted I good. I overdid some of the ingredients. It just did not. No, it did not taste good at oh, all. Oh, you see. Now, I think that might be revising it. Yeah, because you said it tasted okay. Yeah, Carla they, said when you were defending were being, Everybody's yourself. being polite to me about uh, my cooking. And when Carla said, why don't you let me just cook something? That's when I knew I was in trouble. But I insisted at that point, And I pulled off my old recipe and decided instead of trying my old recipe again that I would get something out of a book. Oh, no. Uh, now, before we proceed, and at risk of putting my nose where it has no business in mm -hmm. being, right. what is Carla's reputation as a cook? When she volunteered... When she volunteered to step in and rescue you from this situation, was it... A kind, wise offer? Was Carla, it something that would be what I like to call a, a parallel trade? Carla can cook. Mm, what's her signature dish? She makes a lot of good food. She makes a lot of good food. I'm, all right, stop it. She you makes want to plea the fifth? She, no, I just want to say that she makes a lot of good food. Neither one of us are, I think, uh, I don't think we are both prepared I, right. this is difficult how about you speak do you want English? me to withdraw the question uh, no here it is i don't think uh, neither one of us i think are capable of hitting the home run oh i disagree you you do well for example one of the hardest things to do and there's nothing about it right. in particular i've lost my touch hard. i've lost no. i've fallen out of it i don't do it anymore one of the hardest things to do and it doesn't there's nothing within it that's all that difficult right but is to pull off a thanksgiving meal it and you do count. it count yes it counts what it doesn't about, count it counts. what about bb what? Your beef bourguignon. Oh, that's true. That's true. But that, unfortunately, that's when uh, Captain O'Mara got the lazies, and that's a labor-intensive, uh, not labor-intensive, but it just takes a lot of time and a lot of ingredients. Yeah, they got to bra you got to braise it. And and what uh, you got to do is turn that connective <laughs> tissue back into collagen. Okay, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Paula Dean. <laughs> I appreciate it. But the fact is, I and only serve it to white people. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I decided that I'm going to get this recipe out of a book, and this recipe... Coloring book? Uh, no, regular like recipe online. Right. I got it online, and I don't well, know where it, it came from. was it the Joy of Cookie? You should have always go with the Joy of Cookie. No, you, or Epicurious. That's another place where you yes. get... Hello, honey. Yes, honey. Uh, <laughs> I, I, any idea? No. <laughs> I didn't... What I, I did, Epicurean was my that, recipe is, is shrimp in a museum. sauce that you put over rice, and it's really nice, and it makes a nice presentation. The recipe that I got was more informal, where you cook the shrimp in the sauce with the shells on, and you oh. you, you, <laughs> yeah, you serve it with French bread. And and some people have to peel the shrimp and then wipe their fingers on the French bread? <laughs> well, they peeling shrimp is pretty messy. We had lots of uh, napkins. It was too messy. Maybe it wasn't. It was too messy. It was too messy. 
was There was too much butter in the recipe. It was disgusting amounts of butter. Oh, like when you made that stuffing? It was, uh, yeah, it was just, well, I, I followed the recipe. Yeah. And the recipe was, you know why the sauce tastes good? Because it was like, it was all this butter in there. Yeah. And it was like, and it was not what I expected it to be. And I was very, very frustrated. And, uh, and then the shrimp themselves that I got at My- Harris Titter. Yes, the Manassas uh, shrimp. Uh, the Manassas shrimp that I got, which I got at the seafood counter, which I will never get again, oh. because that's just the same frozen the, crap. The dirty anyway. shrimp. I'll finish this up when we come back. God damn it! Oscar's dirty shrimp. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara show. <laughs> Jesus, uh, this part of the show brought to you by O'Mara. We talked about it before. Yes, do get it. your tickets. Uh, we are looking forward to having you and ten of your friends come out and join us. Mickey Cachello will be there from ninety eight Rock. Mickey joins us in studio on Thursday for two shows. For our He's bonus do the show bonus as well, and we're, and we're debuting a brand new game. Oh, really? Google Match Game. Oh, Google Match Game. That's You're going to love out. this. You're going to love that, and uh, it's great when Mickey can talk dirty. Yeah. Uh, as usual, there no will be uh, lots of music. We're picking our band this week as well. Save the date, Saturday, November 9th, at the State Theater in Falls Church, Virginia, for AmeriCon 2013. So getting back to this uh, dinner, here's where the problem was. I, I knew immediately that uh, I was going to be a little challenged because... Mm. The raw material, the shrimp that I had gotten at the that I thought was the best call to get it at the seafood counter, sure. instead of the frozen stuff that I defrost myself from Costco. I, yeah, you're right. I should have gone with the Costco. Well, no, it's not. I'm not saying Costco. I'm just saying when you buy quote unquote fresh shrimp in our neighborhood, yeah, it's terrible. All they've done it's is garbage. All they've done is thaw it for you. Yeah, that's it, all they do. It was. It oh, was, I never thought about that. And I look and and I get it out of the the last thing. It's I Not do, like they're pulling them out of Goose Creek. Mm-hmm. Was, was <laughs> I? I unwrap the paper and I look at them. And was there an odor? No, tiny, but not 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 to tell me that it's bad. Okay, fresh fish should really have no appreciable odor. Right. Oscar. And so I take the shrimp out, and I look, and what I didn't like was like where they were. There were missed. You know, they're supposed to be uniform size, right? Yes. Yeah, like a forty, was like, like a twenty-one to these thirty. These weren't. Count. It's like a grab bag. But these weren't. They were like some that were chopped in half. There were some. It was like just the big crap. bag of candy you buy that has four different kind of Hershey bars <laughs> in it. So I go into the kitchen because this has to be made at the last minute. Oh. So the guests are already there. I go into the kitchen. I unwrap the shrimp and I look down and I give the Napoleon. I'm like, oh, oh man. Oh, so not only God. are you are really under the gun because there's this is the only thing but, you can do at this point. and not dramatically bad, but they're misshapen. Wrong size shrimp within there. Any and of them? I, are any of them crayfish? Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> I've like got a lobster in there. Before. Yeah, I, they're delicious. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I or had crawfish. I guess it was it was uh, me, Carla, uh, our lovely couple, and Carla's mom who were over there. Mm-hmm. So we have a total of five people, and I got what I thought was the right amount of shrimp. I got two pounds of shrimp. Okay, so you're figuring uh, seven ounces a person, roughly. <laughs> yeah, which is when you. Count and the and shell the, and, and the all tail. that. It's not. And they're horribly oversized food. legs <laughs> because there's some sort of nuclear reactor shrimp it's, from Springfield. It's the crappiest shrimp. He opened and, this package. Three of them walked away. And I so the <laughs> sauce. I make the sauce. And I'm like, God, this is an awful lot of butter. How much butter? Three sticks. Oh my Three God! Sticks. That's Three sticks. Two thirds of a stick of butter per person. <laughs> You didn't even need to serve it. Just set the plate down and slid into the dining room. <laughs> Who wants this butter? That's such right. an idiot. That's right. I'm such an idiot. Meanwhile, and someone hit nine and one on the phone and has their finger on the final one. Uh, that shrimp was really buttery. It yeah. was well and, and sticky, and it just was. Meanwhile, uh, there's a foot race to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> this thing went a, right through me. The next day, I swear to God, I oh, I, like oh, ribbon God. candy. I it bet was, it was. Uh, <laughs> Do you break? No, no, just a total three times. Three big potties in oh, one God. day. You- three big potties in one day, which I never have three big potties. I never have three big potties. <laughs> Do you break? Especially at 54. I'm happy with a good yeah, solid su- morning. Surprised you didn't put out a press release. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Three big potties in the and with, I mean and I mean really official big potties. Do you I'm on uh, the motorcycle with Elizabeth? I'm like, I've got to get home. It's time for third big potty of the day. Do you do you break the ice and say I'm sorry about the the shrimp? I made the comment about. It. <laughs> I'll be out in a second. We need Carla, <laughs> Carla started riffing. Now I'm done. Because Carla, we were bottle feeding the baby, so Carla could have some wine. Yes. More wine than she normally has. Right. Well, she's and being social. Carla started riffing about the fact that I came from a depression era house where, uh, you know, where we did not have enough food for people. Oh. Well, you know, and I really don't do that. I normally like to it, put oh. a, a, a bon desert because we're looking, and I look at these little bowls that I serve, right. and you see like one little. 
<laughs> yeah, one little shrimp head that's yeah. poking over the top, and it's like I'm completely. Bobbing. Yeah. yeah. So not only is there too much butter, looking at you as if to say, "Help." I'm so lonely. Not only is there too much butter. Here's what they saw. Here's for the YouTubers. This is what they saw on the top of the bowl. <laughs> it looked like perfect poly, but it was a shrimp head. And to be fair, uh, Carla, Carla also came from a depression era household. Of course, it was the recession in the mid '90s. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. That's, so let me go through the list. Okay, please. All right, these are the mistakes. Okay. Uh, the raw materials, the shrimp, terrible. Yeah. Not enough shrimp, terrible. Yeah. Too much butter, terrible. Skins on the shrimp that people have to get their fingers all gross to use. Yeah. Mm. The other mistake that I didn't mention. I go to the grocery store on Thursday to get all the raw materials. I come back because this is supposed to be served with French bread. And Carla says, what are you doing? I said, what? She said, the bread you get for a dish like that, you get the same day. You get the same day as the kids. Right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so it, she was right, although we did serve that bread. And when that bread came out, even though it was wrapped in its little, uh, you know, French Moulin Rouge paper bag yeah, that of it course. comes in. I mean, let me guess, red and white stripes. Yeah, red and white stripes. Of course, because it's like taking a trip I'm to Paris. Baguette. <laughs> and, uh, Christ and, Almighty. And, uh, and the bread yeah. was just a little bit chewy. You and said, oh, I have forgotten for a moment that I am in Manassas. I thought I it was, was horrible. on the bank of the same. It was horrible. I, I've never screwed up. I have never screwed up a meal more that I have cared about more in my life. So I've never, you're it, too nervous. It, it tasted good. The food, I mean, the well, of flavor. Of course it did. <laughs> you know, butter. it's a great feeling when you, when you see a dish like that. Food. What? And you, it's a great feeling when you see a dish like that, and you go over someone's house, and yeah. then you take your spoon, which would be your soup spoon, mm -hmm. and you you dip right in there to look for more shrimp. And there's and nothing. And it's a great abyss. No, and it's just <laughs> shrimp. It's, there's rice, and also he's up. Against I looked at Carla like right after we served. I said, "There are more shrimp, right?" And she went, "No," and and like really loudly looks at me with every guest at the table. No, <laughs> no. That's what she did, and I hit the wrong button. Is there any, is I'm there, still nervous about it. Is there any chance that there could have been a last-minute call where you did like a thing where the guests got lots of shrimp and you got like Yeah, two? you know what the last-minute call should have been? Getting a bucket of chicken. Yeah, that would have been That's, good. That, that would have salvaged the evening. It was, that, it was that bad. Also, you have to hurry up and serve it, Oscar, before the dish solidifies. <laughs> <laughs> and, right, yeah. and the Red Sox were playing, so you're watching now, that. Now, see, and that but might that have been was, a problem. That was in the afternoon. Because though. we, uh, because uh, the Colonel is a uh, uh, New Englander, and he yeah. understood the whole Red Sox thing, and the Red Sox game was, you know, well in hand. They kicked their ass. Right. It was absolutely, I didn't even have to think about that, but they got there later, and it was just, it was, I don't know, I just punted it. I have to I ask. I blew it. I blew the whole thing. I, I, I didn't, it was a wonderful evening, because we had a great time, uh, uh, although and isn't that I drank matters? that pumpkin uh, ale that uh, Brian Gothier serves at the oh, Oakton yeah. Wine Shop. I have a six of that at my house. How is it? Oh, my God. It's not only delicious. They're tall bottles, They're tall too. bottles, and it's like drinking, it, it's- Is it like pie? It, it's high octane. Oh, we, have to, yeah. we have to ask Gothier about that that hooch, yeah. Uh, because I'd like to know what the alcohol content. Is. It says here because it's like stuff. it's like super spicy, and it's like oh, the taste of fall isn't this fantastic? And it's like I'll have another one, and I'll have okay. Oh, two. You get two twelve ounces. It's like twenty four ounces per bottle. Every twenty four ounce bottle, it says here, has three sticks of butter. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got on the website. All I know is I would have been fine. Uh, you if know, you had because well, you know what, even when no matter the size of a bottle of beer, it can be a little seven ounce pony, it can right. be a twenty four. You still think of a bottle of beer as a beer, as a beer. And occasionally, I'll go out and buy myself, uh, like you know, bombers of Bex. Mm -hmm. They're twenty four ounces. Pony, what you're you're signaling with fingers? What is that? That, mean? that was eight percent. Jesus, yeah. that's like wine. What is like a Miller Lite? What is a like four like two? Four point five. Oh yeah. my God! So it's got extra alcohol. Like twice yeah. a normal yeah. beer. So the, here, and Brian would probably say this. Uh, not only does the pumpkin ale have that alcohol cup, but it's a better tasting beer, and yeah. that makes you drink more. So you know, by the end of it, it's like, I'm sorry I didn't buy any shrimp for everybody. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Boy, I'm sure you'll be coming to our house again. Shrimp King Hills. It's a fabulous time. <laughs> this is fun. Hey, my mom never oh, you didn't you didn't turn. Um at, after they left. Well, that's okay. I had a Grand Marnier uh after Oh, on dinner top drink. of that? How yes. good that's wonderful. Because that's what you want to put on top of pumpkin ale. You want to put a sweet oh, orangey liqueur God. on sure. top and of it. And then he had a five pound bag of sugar. And a <gasps> Bought some books for for Michael William, uh -huh. and they were kids' books. Any and cookbooks? I, and I, 
Yeah, nice. Isn't it though? That's really, really. I'm nice. so. You know what? That's hard. Oscar, why would you say such yeah, a that's thing? That's so rude. I'm sorry. And I know these books from my childhood because they are kind of New England skewed books, but a lot of people around the country know. Mm. Uh, there is Make Way for Ducklings, mm. which is a classic Robert McCluskey book. Right. There's One Morning in Maine, which is another just fantastic McCluskey book. Books that I really loved as a child. And then one that was kind of Fifty Shades of Grey. Also great. Because, no, you know, you want you to cover him. such an ass for that. <laughs> He'll wait till he's in his uh, early teens so he can read <laughs> yeah, that yeah. one. Uh, gotta, the, kids got to know. And the last one was uh, Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. Did you ever hear of that book? No. Does he I've get in a fight book. at a bar, Mike book. Mulligan? <laughs> oh, here we go. Mike Mulligan. <laughs> you, you'll recognize the book when you see the artwork. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a child, I mostly read the Bible. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Now, you know what I need Old to Old Testament know? or New Testament? What I, oh, only the new. That's that's my people's book. <laughs> I read one-eighth of the Old Testament. I, I want to ask Mike, this new recipe, if he would go so far as to say yeah, that the... dishes the... can stay in the sink all weekend, but God forbid you get to keep those books out. <clears throat> Sorry, that was my meltdown. Wow, the total mood shift. Yeah. Yeah. Today's show. I what, wanted to find the book. What was the alteration uh, in that'll, the... In that'll the come back, that'll come, that moment right there will come back to bite me in the mm. ass. Yeah, only... Maybe we don't post today's show. <laughs> <laughs> what I is love it, you, honey. With the new recipe, how did it differ from the old? What were the ingredients in the new one? I mean, uh, does it still have a lot of Worcestershire just, in it? No, yeah, Worcestershire, uh, you know, Creole seasoning. Right. Butter. Different uh, ratios, though. Garlic, uh, and just the ratios were all screwed up. Yeah. And I think that... It was a wonderful evening, in spite of all that, because we really get along that well. That speaks well to Mike, the friendship. Michael, uh, yeah. uh, Colonel Coburn's uh, wife is just so, just a naturally funny person who really cracks me up. She reminds me of my sister with her sense of humor. So we had, the evening was salvaged, I think. At the end of the night, I look at the two books, and I go, oh, One Morning in Maine, that's great. And yeah. they, they'd already left. And I said, oh, and it's a, it's a Make Way for Ducklings. Mm-hmm. And then I go, <laughs> and Michael Mulligan and Steve Shovel, I remember that book. Ah! I remember that book. That's the book my dad read to me. Did you know that Mike that Mulligan... That book my dad read to me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mike Mulligan and his Steam Shovel is a children's book by Virginia Lee Burton, first published in... 1939, and it wow. features Mike Mulligan, who is a steam shovel operator, and his steam shovel... Do you remember the name? McGillicuddy? Marianne. Marianne. Yeah, Marianne. based on yeah, a 2007 remember. online poll, it's one of the teacher's top 100 books for children. It was a great book, and because it was Michael, my name, Mike Mulligan, mm. uh, that was... Uh, that was <laughs> You were, totally you were a steam way. shovel as a kid. I get it. And it was, yeah. I was that way. <laughs> According to this, uh, Mike Mulligan. I was, a little, I was a little out of it all weekend. To be honest with you, emotionally, I was a little unstable all weekend. According to this. Weepy uh, would be the world. Weepy. I, I, Irish weepy all weekend long. The plot synopsis. Apparently, Mike Mulligan has two daddies. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> kidding. That is so unfair. <laughs> They come but aboard my steam shovel. It was, I want to thank them for uh, for suffering through my meal. Uh, I will Do you, tell you really that think they suffered? This is what I'm going to be doing. Do you think they suffered bad enough that they went to a fast food place on the way home? No. Honey fries. No, I don't think so. Was there a they, dessert? Yes, there was. What was it? There, <laughs> pecan pie. Oh, God. And you know, you've never in 20 Hi, Mike, years. You're looking great. And I'll do anything for food. But anyway. 20 was, years you've never given me pecan pie. My favorite pie. Okay, good. It's a wonderful pie. So it, it was fine. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Enough about you, Spiewak. And that, it was it was fine. And <laughs> now was, I'm Irish weepy. And, and, and when you have a meal like that with three sticks of butter, what better thing to do than go to on a uh, ride the next day uh, with your daughter supporting the American Heart Association? Was it more the butter or the pumpkin? <laughs> it was. It, you know what? <laughs> I think it was the Grand Marnier. Yeah, you know what? Uh, you might have gotten a bad batch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then the next day, I I meet up with uh, Jimmy at uh, and I have to go pick Elizabeth up because she's going to ride with sure. me. At uh, so I pick her up. I leave the house at seven thirty. Don't no, forget sorry, your daughter. Eight o'clock. Pick her up at eight thirty and <gasps> get to Jimmy. Uh, you have such early mornings yeah. after such a yeah. wild night. Yeah, yeah. Great. and a very rich. So night. when I arrived at the uh, Heart Association, it's like I'm like, hi, hi, how's everybody doing? Hi, how are you? Well, covering, you know covering my mouth. I'm hoping bit. you didn't tell anyone in the Heart Association how much butter you had the night before. It was, yeah. <laughs> what clogs and arteries? Well, Three all sticks? I know is, uh, you know, the, the, and I said, so I woke up uh, first thing in the morning, and, uh, you know, there is absolutely a uh, giant, giant potty. And then halfway through the Speaks ride. Speaks well of the pipes. Elizabeth says, Dad, you have to get me home early. We're going to have to break it off early. I've got homecoming. Oh, yeah. And, like, and you know, normally I'd be like, oh, honey, yeah. you know, we're supposed to be there. What about we're, our we're, time? We're going to Mr. Cerrito's restaurant. We're going to do that. And, I, and my, my respect, oh, you want to go now? Okay. 
We're, yeah. we're gone. And we went back, and all I was thinking... You didn't have to do a giant potty at Jimmy's place, did you? No. Or no. at your ex-wife's. No. Oh, that's awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, I shouldn't say that. No, you shouldn't. Just Let's move it. forward. Just say it! I did, I did massive potty at the Harley dealership. Did you really? Oh, no. <laughs> They've got a great restroom, though. They do nice have and a private, great, yes, super they, clean. Yes, well, it was. It no, was. no, no. It is legitimately <laughs> yeah. the nicest restroom yeah. I've seen in like a commercial. Space. And it was the and it was the big <laughs> potty. There. And when you're doing big potty in a public restroom, the last thing you want. And as a father, I can say that the last thing you want is the dad who brings the kid in. Oh, I know. And has the loud conversation because Wash it has to hands, do with son. Dookie. Are you okay, dad, son? Dad, where am I going? Okay, over here. I'm like, I'm trying to take a dump in here. Please just finish up and leave. Meanwhile, Mike's in the handicap stall with his knees locked. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Radio's Michael Barry here, uh, sweating. Uh, <laughs> I'll sign autographs soon, but no. not now. No, the thing that was wonderful <laughs> about it was it was particularly uh, easy. It was well, quick. It was over. It was over almost as soon as it began. Did you know? I don't want to get too graphic, yeah. but did you know clearly when it was over, or did no. you hang? No, you see, that's a problem. No. It can be as well. That's never the case. That's certainly not healthy. It can be. That's never the case. It can be me. quick and easy, but if you don't have a stopping point, I'd really love to be like a deer or a rabbit. Yeah, but I'm not. Oh, with Linus, you can just count one, two, and a half, and he's done. And that's it. That's it. And there's no, you know, no and need for time any, to clean the carpet. No need right. for any Charmin <laughs> time, with him. Time to drag the ass. No, with me it's just like. <laughs> no, with me it's like one, two, three. Three and a half. Oh, That's God. right. Three and three quarters. Check your email. Mop. <laughs> oh, dab. Gross. <laughs> gross. It's gross. As Jesus. I said, I didn't want to go too far with <laughs> yeah, it. But you, too late. Funny. But you've always expressed it so beautifully. Well, yeah, Mike. It's sort of like trying to throw brownie batter <laughs> through a sieve. <laughs> Oh, and who God. hasn't had a morning like that? <laughs> but uh, but that's not consistent. Well, that was the second one of the day, and I little you know I literally was shocked that halfway through the ride at about twelve noon, twelve thirty, <laughs> you know, out on the beautiful northern Virginia countryside, sure, that it's suddenly inspired it's just like you know, in, I'm cruising along, I'm fine, but in my in my you know down in my bowels, the voice go the pain. The pain again. <laughs> the, the pain. Urgency. Again. It's back. And uh, and then I got home, and yeah. Carla wasn't here, and her mother wasn't here, and it was all to myself. And I leave the just, door open. Uh, no, no, le- no. I, I lock the door when I'm going to have to do that. Good boy. And uh, that was it. Uh, that was it. And I don't think anymore for the rest of the uh, the evening. Keep us updated. Thank you. Three <laughs> a day. Sure. <laughs> but you're back on no, schedule. Back uh, on schedule for Sunday. Uh, three a day. Yeah, we're getting there. Sure. Uh, th- I think I'm back to sk- on my schedule today. Yeah, it's it's, it's a long procedure. It's, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> it's not. A it's a sprint. <laughs> but uh, thanks to Cliff and Felicia, my friends out there. You had such gorgeous weather we for had your great ride. Thanks to uh, Jimmy and his uh, lovely wife, Maureen. Cerrito, they were out there, and uh, we had a fantastic time, all for the American Heart Association, and got to hang out with uh, my daughter. Took my daughter to lunch on the way home because we had an extra half hour. How does she do great. on the back of the bike? She loves being on the bike. Does she? That's great. She loves to ride. She loves to be a part of that. And uh, I, you know, all my kids are, are, they're all, now I say all my kids. I've got one that hasn't formed his personality yet. But uh, as far as Catherine and Elizabeth, they're, they're very different. Yep. And they're just equally a uh, delight. And I wrote that, I think, on Facebook because I just love them so yeah. much. Her date for prom. Uh, she was homecoming. she was going with oh, the homecoming. going with the ladies going oh, with the ladies yeah ladies she's night. going she's going with a gang of girls nice. that's uh, and that's what she that's the, the oh, cool yes. thing oh yes it's ladies night and the mood is right oh yes it's ladies <laughs> night but uh, she's you know into that with the whole school spirit I like that and uh, everything's fine and then the one thing I didn't mention was uh, on Sunday I had my first paranoid moment with my newest child how come because he coos with her and screams with me and that's what I at one point late in the day yesterday not you know, consistently she would be holding no but not but yesterday. Today, maybe it was just the, the fatigue of the weekend, and I'm holding my, my son. He's going, wah, wah, and then she immediately puts him in Carla's arms, and it's like, coo, coo, coo. Oh. Then back with me, wah, wah, and then back with her, coo, coo, coo. And I had a little paranoid, like, what am I doing wrong? You have to fix it. I was, uh, Buy him a gift. Uh, <laughs> Buy him a gift. Pro flowers. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Here's a new shiny football for you. Let me tell you something about a guy named Mike Mulligan. Yeah. It's, uh, so he's a good boy. and uh, <laughs> He's a good boy. <laughs> he's, he's a good boy. Uh, we didn't get to half the crap I wanted to talk about in today's show. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with news you may not need on the Mike O'Mara Show. I knew it from the start. Mike loves Firefall. So. Why are you playing this? Flute Rock. What? Good, it's Flute Rock. Good Monday morning record. Firefall. What's the, what's the name of your band? 
How about Firefall? Mike, what I'm doing, I'm trying to mix it up, okay? All right. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment of our show is brought to you by Amazon. Yes. Uh, the Mike O'Mara Show's Amazon page. Amazon is the one place to go for everything you need. Ready for Halloween? I'm hmm? not. I'm not, Mike. Well, don't be frightened. <laughs> Listen up, boys and ghouls. Amazon has got you covered. Amazon has costumes, decorations, pumpkin carving kits, eerie sound effects, fog machines, makeup, capes, tombstones, <laughs> scary lights, top hats, fake blood by the gallon, gangs of skeletons, and of course, all your favorite Halloween candy at prices so low, yes. it's scary. It's more than special. The only thing that you'll have to uh, provide is the screams. How about that? Amazon makes it a cinch. <laughs> We were talking about cinching before. Lead pipe cinch. Uh, if you need it, Amazon has it always open at com slash Amazon. And don't forget, it's the best place for all your office supplies, too. Amazon, uh, today and every day. Save money and support the show. Just click the Amazon link at com, And don't be afraid to bookmark it, everybody. From around the globe, across the nation, looking through your neighbor's window, the Mike O'Mara Show now presents news you may not need. A comprehensive look at the stories you may or may not be talking about during your daily activity. And now, news you may not need. A U.S. official says the target of a raid by Navy SEALs in Somalia over the weekend was a Kenyan man named Abdulkader Mohammed Abdulkader. I guess he uses the same name twice. I don't know why. Saves money on cufflinks? Okay. <laughs> What? Does that even make sense? Is I want to tell you. Hey, hi, hi. Hi, everybody. The Kenyan government intelligence document names him as the coordinator of other planned attacks. The man, also known as Ikrima, was... Uh, it's known. delicious in coffee. I-K-R-I-M-A. Ikrima was mm. a known operator for the Somali militant group Al-Shabaab. Uh, the document says that foiled plots by Abdul Qadir included plans to target Kenya's parliament building and the UN office in Nairobi, as well as an Ethiopian, uh, Ethiopian restaurant patronized by Somali government officials. The Ethiopian restaurant is found on Route 28 in Manassas. <laughs> it does not appear. Small portions. That Saturday's raid resulted in the killing or capture of Abdulkader. Abdul Kader. Krima. The U.S. official who confirmed the target of the SEAL raid insisted on anonymity because he wasn't authorized to discuss the matter. Just a quick update. Yes. They didn't catch him. I know. They, yeah, they didn't know, but the, the reason why they didn't catch him is that... No, they didn't kill him. They were going to try to kill him or catch him. Yeah, but when they pulled in, they weren't expecting... And again, it was just breaking as I was coming in here. They weren't expecting the firefight. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they were apparently opened up on severely. And, the, the you know, you have to take positives. Look, the win record these guys oh, have... Clearly. Is absolutely this isn't an anti-American story. Clear, it's just yeah, it's not easy. And the fact is that they got out uh, with I think no casualties yes. with SEAL Team Six, which yes. is great. Uh, meanwhile, the successful raid, uh, Libya said Sunday, it's asked the United States for clarifications regarding the abduction in Tripoli of an Al Qaeda leader linked to the 1998 U.S. embassy bombings yes. in East Africa, adding that Libyan nationals should be tried in their own country. Well, Libyans gover Libya's government right now is kind of scattered; they don't right. really have one. Uh, the government. But then again, neither do we. Yeah, the, <laughs> we don't either. Not a bang. The government's reaction came a day after U.S. Special Forces captured Nazi Abdul Hamed Al Raki, known by his alias Anas Al Libi, in a raid. Al Libi is on uh, the FBI's most wanted list with a five million dollar bounty on his head. In a statement, the government said it contacted the American authorities and asked it to present clarifications regarding the Al Libi uh, abduction. It also said it hoped the incident would not impact its strategic relationship with the United States. So. Mm. You know, at least we got another bad yeah. guy. Sure. Uh, you know, off the playing Big field, win. and that's a good thing. Well, speaking of what Rob just referenced, the number two House Democrat says a key factor extending the government shutdown is fear among moderate Republicans about a Tea Party challenge. Okay, is there anything new? Have we heard? Have we not heard no. this a hundred times before? Keep being scared, and we keep having no government. Maryland's Representative Steny Hoyer, that's a weird name, yeah. uh, says he believes 140 to 160 of the 232 House Republicans quote think what's being done right now is irrational. Does Boy, Steny know Dev? <laughs> Dev Digazaldi. Yeah, I was wondering. Steny's been in Congress for a long time. Yes. Uh, Hoyer tells MSNBC Monday that these lawmakers are looking over their shoulders at potential Tea Party challenges. It's based on fear. Of course. It, like, like when everything, you know, when things don't work, a lot of times it's fear-based, mm -hmm. and somebody's got to grow a set and step up. Right Hoyer on. said GOP friends have told him privately that they don't understand the uncompromising position taken by more conservative members of their caucus, lawmakers who have fallen into line with Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Hoyer said the partial government shutdown now, in effect, is different from past closures. Quote, 
because this is a tactic. This is not a result of the inability to get an agreement. I think it is a tactic. Very true. Valid. We'll have to see. I mean, uh, do you see any movement, anything happening this week? No. no there's or, a lot of what the White House may do, what the what, what Congress will do, what Senate will accept, but there's no agreement. There's nothing on the um, table. Do you yeah. think anything will bend when we get closer to the next deadline? We'll have to. We'll have to, because if that happens, it's not going to be good for any of us. Has anyone tried says. calling and asking for a lower rate? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, you know, I just, as long as I they... like the refi. We I think... take our business to France. Uh... I think just paint it. <laughs> paint the debt ceiling. I like it. <laughs> uh, minutes after 14-year-old Elizabeth Smart was snatched from her bedroom in the dead of night, a police cruiser idled by along a neighborhood street as she was forced to the ground at night point. Move and I will kill you, her captor hissed. It was one of several fleeting times Smart watched a rescue slip away during her nine-month ordeal. She recounts in my story. I really want to read this. Did a, you see her on the TV yeah, this morning? I thought she was uh, so composed so composed and yeah. so sweet, still very, very innocent. Yeah. Uh, this is a brand-new book released uh, today. She writes that she was so terrified of the street preacher who kidnapped her that when she was rescued by police in a Salt Lake City suburb in March of 2003, she only reluctantly identified herself. That is a, a wow. sad story, but a happy ending, and she says yeah. she's very happy How old now. was she when she got? 14 years 14. old. Oh. Seven years after being named Esquire Magazine's Sexiest Woman Alive, she's back, and I know you're a fan. Scarlett Johansson mm. has earned the title for a second time. Uh, Johansson, who also won in 2006, is the first woman to get the honor twice. Last year's winner was Mila Kunis. Johansson jokingly tells the magazine she's got a hustle. And pretty soon the roles you're offered all become mothers. Then they just sort of stop. <laughs> Charming. The 28-year-old actress is also off the market. She recently went public with her engagement to former French journalist Romain Duriac. She was so excited, Oscar, she nearly smiled. <laughs> it will be her second marriage. She split from Ryan Reynolds in 2010. Uh, Hottie Factor with Scarlett Johansson. What do you think? I, you know, she's never done it for me. There are never pictures done it for of me her. either. There are pictures of her when she looks lovely, but when you see her in video or in interviews, right. she loses me sure, her, To me, her face looks like she's been stung by a bee. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I like her. When, uh, she's, when she's keeping it tight. When she's she fluctuates. keeping That's it right. tight, she fluctuates. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, More donuts? This is what I now, a new feature because he helps me out so often with the news. I'm going to call this Tommy Lang News. Hi, Tommy. Tommy sent me this story. A Dubuque County man identifying himself as a cartoon character seeking non-existent Girl Scouts faces. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me read it correctly. Wow. Seeking non-existent Girl Scouts. He uh, will be charged after his arrest in Iowa City. Police responded to a report of a man crying for help on the banks of Ralston Creek near the corner of Lynn and Prentice Streets. Wow. Arriving officers found 19-year-old Sean Michael Siegert of Piosta in mud along the water's edge. When asked for his name, Siegert identif <laughs> identified himself as Peggy Hill of oh. Arlington, Texas. Of course, oh, no. from King of the Hill program. <laughs> the King of the Hill program, I should say. Bobby? Uh, <laughs> Siegert then pleaded for help, saying he had lost four Girl Scouts. And the police needed to find them. Yes. He also said he wanted to help them earn <laughs> merit badges. Yeah, you want to talk about a tactic. That is so creepy. Wow, that is creepy. It's, it's like, like out in the middle part of the country, too. Wrong on, a, wrong on a couple levels. First responders were able to rescue Siegert from what they described as a life-threatening situation. So maybe he was down yeah, near the, uh, the rushing river. He showed multiple signs of intoxication. Yeah. Shocker. And was taken to the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics for treatment. Siegert was charged with public intoxication upon his release, officers were unable to locate any Girl Scouts. Well, in a, in a way, that's good, I think. It's funny. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. And now a little something-something. <laughs> this happened a few weeks back, but the arrest report just came out now. On September 21st, 69-year-old Steve Orville Clemens <clears throat> yes. of Wildwood, Florida. Thank you for having his middle name. Steve went through a McDonald's drive through pantsless. As he got up to the window, he handed the female cashier his money. And when she turned around to hand him his change, she saw him vigorously doing that thing that you do when yeah. you don't have pants on. And that's when he grabbed her arm and tried to make her join in on touching him down there. Well, you know, it's always nice to be invited. Fortunately, she got her arm free, slammed the drive through window shut, and called 911 as he sped off. Police tracked him down in the gas station parking lot nearby. He still hadn't put on any pants, but he did have a T-shirt draped over his lap. Well, that's nice. Steve will be in court on Wednesday facing a misdemeanor battery charge. He just wanted his uh, help with his McCafe vanilla shake. Oh. <laughs>
The wrap came undone on his crispy ranch snack wrap. Oh, no. Aww. He thought he was missing one of his mighty wings. Oh. He just wanted some extra yogurt on his part. Oh, oh no. There weren't enough nuts in his pralines and cream McFlurry. Oh, God. He wasn't satisfied with his soft-baked oatmeal raisin cookie. Oh. <laughs> and finally, he wanted to show her his bacon habanero ranch quarter pounder. <laughs> we'll take a break. Come back with more. Rob's got the magic audio ball right after this. You know, that was the first time a customer ever asked the lady if she wanted to supersize it. Out of bake. Hey! <laughs> You know, it's tough when you're writing comedy by going to the McDonald's main menu. Uh, that's how I do it. It's great. Uh, <laughs> welcome oh. back to the Mike O'Mara Show. We just opened it up, but this uh, segment of the program is brought to you by Score Big. It's about time football is back. Yes. And if you think it's too expensive, as I do, it's really not. The game is not always sold out just because someone told you it was. Score Big is the first and only place you need to go for tickets. You can save up to 60% from the Raptors to the front row. That's up to 60%. See your favorite games. Do it today. Score Big has all the best sports tickets, shows, family events, everything going on in the area. Football tickets are available now. They have regular season pro games and even college tickets are available. They've got baseball, soccer, theater, and family shows. Theater. Here's the offer. Go to scorebig.com, click on the radio button, enter the code TMOS, and Scorebig will send you a $25 coupon that you can use on your first purchase today, tomorrow, or next month. Free money. Don't forget to click on the radio button and enter TMOS. Scorebig sends you a $25 coupon that you can use on your first purchase. So you combine that with up to 60% savings, and you can take a family of four to a game and do it affordably. Now, that's the smart way to have fun. Check out scorebig.com. Without further ado, let's get right to the audio vault. Mr. Rob Spiewak. You like voices? I do. Can you name this voice? This is a lady, and I want you to know... If hey, you, lady! If you can recognize this voice. Oscar, you should play, too. Her name is Susan Bennett. My voice can be heard on many GPS systems, many telephone systems. Mm. When I first... The Garmin lady? Siri. That is, and although Apple has not confirmed it, CNN has vetted her. This is the lady that recorded the voices for Siri. Oh, wow. Let's hear her again in, in, in totality. She's an Atlanta, Georgia-based voice actress named Susan Bennett. If you want to see her, it's a CNN link, but I have it on my Facebook page. She's not that guilty. My voice can be heard on many GPS systems, many telephone systems. When I first uh, discovered that um, that was my voice... To be honest, it was a little creepy. Uh, I'm used to hearing my voice maybe in the airport. Thank you for using Delta Airlines. But wow. very weird. And you know what? The thing that's weird about it, she didn't know what they were recording her for. Oh, my God. So she, she had found to keep out it about it. Well, no, she didn't know. She was just getting a paycheck. Well, she no, just got a paycheck. They had to keep it a secret so right? they wouldn't let her yeah. know. Right, but here she is talking about when they actually did the recording sessions. The Siri voices were recorded in 2005. In the month of July, uh, four hours a day for the whole month. So when I recorded those voices, I had absolutely no idea where they would end up. According to, to, to hear her tell it, a friend called her that had just upgraded and said, is that your voice? She had to go to an Apple store because she had, I, she had oh, an iPhone, wow. too. Did she say how much she got paid? I don't she know did what not the, say. I don't know what the, the details are, but speaking of that, because we all think of that being broadcasters, mm -hmm. the fact that they didn't tell her what it was for means... No, she didn't get paid. Yeah. No, you know, okay. it's she got underhanded. Paid. She got paid, but I guarantee you she did not. It's not like because you're the Siri voice and your voice is going to be used this many times, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Four no, hours she, a day for a month? She got a huge session fee. Yep. And, uh, and that's she, it. And that's, that's it. That's wow. it. Once I that, feel for her. I feel for her that the fact she got it out, you know, after the fact she found out. Right. And also the fact that to this day, Apple has not confirmed it. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I would doubt uh, that she would be able to. She could probably, you know, make uh, money I, on her fame. I would that. think so, but I also think that Apple probably is corporately minded enough that they did they something in the contract. Yeah, yeah. No, that looked. You know what? It probably looked useless at the right. time that she signed it. Yeah, and if she's done a lot of this stuff where she's worked for, you know, inside of cars, where yeah. you yeah, do that, yeah, you know, yeah, she yeah. probably, yeah. you know, you, doing that kind of a session four hours a day for an entire month, it's probably not that unusual for her. Julia switched her Siri to the boy voice. Have you heard that? I have not heard the boy yeah, voice. Yeah, it's, it's not so good, but they also have, Is like, the boy voice worth bringing in on the audio vault? We, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll okay. Bring him, because also there's different accents. Right. I believe there's a British man, an Australian man, mm -hmm. and there's an Irish guy, but he doesn't show up. So, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> And he makes terrible shrimp. You do, now, come on. Right, what you. are you doing? I know. Uh, George Stephanopoulos. Do you watch the George Stephanopoulos program? I do not. I watch Meet the Press, actually. I watched uh, Toothy Savannah on Meet the Press with uh, Rand Paul, who looks really 
as though he's got. Oh, he's. Not. I don't know what that hair is. I really don't know what that is. I think it's purchased. It's. I'm. I'm sure it's purchased. But what the hell did somebody tell him that looks good? It looks like bad pubic hair. Yeah, I haven't seen it up close. As opposed to really great pubic hair. <laughs> like mine. Yeah. And Savannah's. Uh, and by the way, Savannah, lose the glasses. They're not fooling anybody. Oh, Savannah. Uh, I, look, I, you know what? She is a brilliant woman. There's no doubt. Oh, she's I think, great. I think she carried Meet the Press beautifully in the yeah. place of uh, David Gregory. I think she actually might even be better than David Gregory. But there's something about Savannah that has this demeanor of... I'm the best kid in school. You know exactly, what I mean? That's exactly so it. true. And it drives me nuts. Yeah. yeah She's but, the one that graduates with a 4.3 GPA. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, all right. right. Yeah, so kill her. I don't know. <laughs> Be done with her. Be done with her. Rob, Rob you couldn't God. think of anything to I say. Couldn't, I couldn't. And his real psyche came through. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? That's I, the real Rob Spiewak. <laughs> Bring me back my old Today Show. That's okay. all I want. Anyway, no but anyway, on the George Stephanopoulos program, my favorite variety show, uh, they had John Boehner on, and I wonder if he had some sort of one key message he was trying to get out there. I just put together a montage of some of his comments. I don't see any, any sort of, you know... Uh, consistency here we asked to sit down and have a conversation we'll sit down and have a conversation we're interested in having a conversation a simple conversation it's about having a conversation clearly there was a conversation about doing this several conversations several it's time for us to sit down and have a conversation let's sit down and have a conversation you know we've had conversations before. one interview Why yeah they, okay, okay stop i, I don't okay. want to hear it does it, we played less than half this of it. is what the they all do and they're prepped, and they're on, it's all about being on message, and it's frustrating, and it's one of the reasons that Washington is broken Red-locked. like it yeah. is. But they like the word conversation. It sucks. Well, and, how about know, more action? Yeah, they say, here's what we want you to say. Don't say game again, but say conversation this Sounds time. friendly. Do it that way. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, let's move on. You know who's still so funny is Will Ferrell. Yes! Bring it to me. What's he doing? He's been hired as a spokesperson. Now, you hate Will Ferrell more than anybody in the movies. Oh, I do. So I do. this is probably an example of him not being funny. He's been hired by Dodge Durango to I be saw the spokesman the or the Dodge Durango, but not as Will Ferrell. As Ron Burgundy. As Ron <laughs> Burgundy. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Look at him. He's laughing Are you going to play us a little? Of course I am. <laughs> this is this is a and Dodge is a big company. All right. This is not like you know. This is not like a little niche beer ad. This is Dodge here's, Durango. Here's the problem. You what? know I would love to support you. Will Ferrell, the Ron Burgundy character. It's the, maybe the closest he gets to being funny. <laughs> uh, that you It makes me it. laugh. I, I can't not like right. the Ron Burgundy Let's hear character. how you do with this commercial. I'm Ron Burgundy. On my right is the new Dodge Durango. She's got it all, including 25 Impigas Highway. What? Impigas. Mepigas? Mepigas? Impigas. What's the matter with you? Impigas? 25 Impigas. Impigas. I'm saying it right, but it just doesn't sound familiar. Hmm. You know, it's no wonder you screwed up the shrimp. If I'm you think sorry. that's funny. I'm Ron Burgundy. There are moments when it's funny. That's not funny, and that's not effective. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. You better check yourself. In- <laughs> Before you wreck yourself. Impigus. All right. Uh, but I, I waited till now to give you the award. This might be the tape of the week, and I know it's only Monday. But Chris Jenner, who is a fabulous entertainer on the uh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians program. Is this the mom? Yes. Yeah. Um, she had a, an incident, and uh, it'll be explained in the tape, but one of the Kardashian triplets was going through uh, Chris's purse. The and found Kardashian a, triplets? And found an extra pair of panties. And wanted to know why Chris was carrying extra underwear. Uh, Let's see oh, what happens. Underwear. Why do you have those in your bag? I was shaving in the JJ area. I cut the out of myself. I had to put white, thick, so don't wear cream. Thong. Looks like Mia Swarren. I put everything in there. There's four different things in there trying to heal it. So because it's all, it gets goopy, so I have to midday change my underwear. And I want you to know that's not, that's not like a hidden microphone. (laughs) Boo. That's on their television yeah, show. Yeah, that's their thing. That's their trip. I just yeah. talked about going big potty, so I can't be a hypocrite. And, but and I, I no, just no. hate them. No, it's okay. And before we close, I just want to close with a thought. I normally close with the tape, but today yes. I close with a thought. All right. If you're going to say that, Chris, say on, not in. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's your magic audio ball. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, Pony, uh, think about your day, okay?
Okay. <laughs> because tomorrow we'll be talking to you. Yeah. All right, you got and, it. And why he has extra underwear with him. Exactly. <laughs> uh, for tech support questions for the Mike O'Mara show, because it gets all goopy. <laughs> Contact Goopy Bloom. Our man, Pony Boy, at MichaelMarishow.com. All correspondence for our show can be sent to TMOS PO Box 3, Manassas, Virginia, 20108. Don't forget, get your tickets to Omericon. It's November 9th. That's a great Saturday night at the, the State Theater in Falls Church, Virginia. We'll see you there. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael O'Mara saying goodbye, everybody. Goopy. Ciao, ciao. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Please remember to grab your extended free trial of Hulu Plus, a special offer just for our listeners. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com and click on the Hulu Plus banner and start watching all of your favorite shows right now. Or you can go to HuluPlus.com slash TMOS. Again, that's HuluPlus.com slash TMOS. Or click the Hulu Plus banner at MikeOmeraShow.com. You may go now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. (laughs) 